Hey, good Monday morning, everyone. It's time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, it's a new week. Yeah, we're getting a little sell-off from the top, and I have to tell you, I think that that's perfectly reasonable. Some of the big stocks that led us up on Friday. There's Martin Franklin, by the way, who's is. just such a great job. Do you know he's Come run seven? In. How many marathons? Seven, seven marathons, seven continents, seven days. This is why. Last one was Monday. This is why Jordan, this driven man, is why Jordan was one of the greatest performing stocks of all time. Thank you. But has not been is soon by Newell. And you have to question how well Newell's really run, given the fact that you gave him a home run. I tried. Good Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, Jim, how was that interview? Uh, well, I've what known Martin for ages, and Martin is a true performer. Uh, the problem is, uh, you know, Newell has indeed missed the numbers badly, and that's not been Martin's style. So you have to say to yourself, Martin's on the board. Martin's watched it happen. Martin's navigated all sorts of markets. I had a tiff with Martin uh, probably 20 years ago where I questioned Jordan. He came in, he said he needed, needed three, four hours to go over it. He showed me why Jordan was great, and I've been a backer ever since. And when the deal occurred, I thought for sure it would be a match made in heaven, 500 million synergies. But there, you heard, Martin, if you listen, the, the key driver of Newell's business had been, been the writing, Sharpies, and that fell off badly. Uh, now, uh, the Jordan businesses, Martin assures us, were the ones that are, and are the ones that are doing well. And uh, I think that this starboard initiative with Martin could win. Now, some people are calling it a hostile takeover with no premium. Uh, I, we got out uh, for Newell ahead for action alerts, ahead of what turned out to be a tsunami of selling and missed quarters, three missed quarters. Uh, untoler it's just not tolerable that you could have three. It's intolerable to have three, uh, three guide downs. I, I, frankly, I've, I've never seen it in my life, and that's what Mike Polk did. So uh, I think that there's uh, cogency to what Martin's trying to do, uh, but it doesn't make me want to buy the stock. I just don't want to. Well, Martin mentioned $500 million in synergies, but well, yet that's, no, that's what they were supposed to happen. It, right. it didn't materialize. Not only that, but now the channel, as I asked Martin, the channel's been bad. You know, they sell into Target and Walmart. And obviously, all the companies that sell into that have been squeezed because the department, these big discounters are saying, listen, we're going to take some of your margin. But it is interesting that the Sharpie business has fallen off. A lot of what was exciting about uh, Newell was uh, the Elmer's division with the uh, slide. A and it, that's kind of a faddish thing. But at the same time, in defense of Mike Polk, a lot of the sporting goods products that were Jordan sold into a channel that got hurt very badly. We saw a lot of bankruptcies in smaller companies and even a big bankruptcy sports authority. But uh, the Johnson's business has been very, no one is saying, no one from either side is saying that Martin Franklin's businesses are a problem. And I think that shows you why he wants to come back in because his business has done well and he wants to try to fix the overall cash flows. Uh, we are waiting for a definitive answer from Mike as Starboards addresses the letter to Mike. Uh, because it's not clear to me what Mike's meth, what Mike's game plan is to get Newell back to the 50s, where we owned it for Action Alerts and out of the 20s. All right, we'll continue to watch that one. We have to watch that closely. Yes. Meanwhile, Jim, back to the broader markets. Yeah, it opened up 300. That's a sucker's play, and it's now come down to half of that, which is, you know, I'm not trying to to be negative about the market. I know there's a big dispute. Uh, people don't want to believe me when I say that these instruments like the Tivix are in charge and, and they're not being um, empirical. Uh, these instruments and the VIX uh, uh, cause a lot of blow-ups and I, I am familiar with some myself. And uh, the blow-ups led to dramatic selling. The position was you got short the VIX or one of its derivatives and went long common stock. Uh, and to unwind that and meet margin calls, you had to blow out of the common stock. And that's been, uh, on Friday, you did not have the margin calls. But all last week, you had margin calls related to VIX. And I'm, I point that out because the margin calls were not related to the tenure. The tenure stopped. The margin calls were directly related to this VIX strategy. And once all those people are margined out and you never know when they're done, then you have terra firma. But uh, until I see more evidence that they're don't gone, 
Uh, and that would be because the volume stopped going up on these different instruments. And I've written extensively in Real Money about them. Please go to my Real Money articles. What you will see is continued volatility off the volatility. Yeah, I was following your tweets on Friday towards the close. You nailed what happened well, yeah, perfectly. I said it would be up 500 at one point if they could clear uh, 11 on TIVX. If TIVX we went down to 11, I said we'd be up to five, up 500. When it, when it ticked at 11, the Dow went to 500. So maybe it's better to be lucky than good. But uh, that's an example of what I'm talking about. The people who trade these products and the people who issue these products really right now despise me. And you know what I say is bring it on because I don't play for dinner. Meanwhile, your friend Ken Fisher out with a column. Fantastic column. I mean, I'm going to carry it with me all day, talking about how this is actually much more garden variety and lent history to it. One of the things that happens is that it is true, my friend Michael Santoli said it was the fastest decline, and absolutely the velocity was quite frightening. But on a percentage basis, as Ken Fisher explains, it wasn't that bad. And the reason I like Ken is because Ken is a, a historian of the stock market. It's one of the reasons why um, I have endorsed Ken's work and I love the interplay that I get when I get to interview Ken because I think Ken's the greatest historian uh, using history, of course, uh, is a tremendous help for trying to predict. That's my view. Ken would always just say, look, use history. Uh, and I don't want to put words in Ken's mouth, but his article this morning uh, giving you some perspective was extraordinary. And you did an hour-long webinar with Ken for yeah, the and street. I want people to go look at that, and I know that our EZU position is in large part because of some of the things that get to the European ETF. But Ken said, "Where do you think Europe's going to be good?" I do think, by the way, that the European bond market is not reflecting uh, the opportunities that are coming into their market by our market. And I would think the Europeans, remember, there's 800 million people over there, should be buying our bonds. I think the Chinese should be buying our bonds at these prices. The Chinese and the Saudis have stayed away. It's interesting, the Saudis may be challenged by lower oil prices. The Chinese, it may be more spite. I don't know. But I just think that at a certain point, 28, 29, our bonds are so much more compelling than the European bonds that if you uh, had any sort of charter that allowed you any flexibility, you would be selling European bonds and buying our bonds. All right, Jim, we'll leave it there for right now. We're going to continue the conversation on actionalertsplus.com. And don't forget, we have an uh, 11.30 on Wednesday. We have yes. our, our um, what we think is our, I, I just, I'm just telling you, sign up and you will be able to watch our Wednesday presentation. And you know, 3,000 people watch these and I, or listen to them. And I really urge you, I'm doing a retrospective about how to do portfolio management for yourself and the mistakes that we've made by not following our discipline. Yeah. That's Wednesday at 11.30. I like to talk about the mistakes because the good stuff works out by itself. That's how we learn. All right, thanks, Jim.